Hi everybody, uh, that's, that's really weird, but thanks for Jean and everybody else for setting this up. And stay safe and you all look very pretty with your masks. Um, so the, this is a brief update of the bibliography I've been doing since, well, a little over 13 years. And you, which you should find on your uh, on Eric's stick, and this is just an update. Uh, and I will show some examples of what you can do with it. So I will briefly explain sort of where the bibliography is at the moment. Uh, I will compare it with some other projects which you will hear about later, according to the schedule during the conference. And I will give an example of how to use the bibliography if, in your area of interest. And I will at the end I will say. Uh, where to go further. So this is again quoting Richard J. Nelson that you have to boldly document the history of calculators and their applications. And uh, I think when you look at the last the most recent years, there have been like Jake's project and Eric's project and many other people's project. And so people have been documenting machines in, in great detail. And um, so this is part of that process. Um, I started in 2007 uh, uh, documenting books because I was interested in crack I had a few, I wanted to buy a few more, and I was, I was just sort of systematically scanning some editor catalogs I had, and to assemble this information, I was scanning Jake's uh, DVD at the time, and so that got me started. And the main interest was not so much manuals or machines, it was the applications. Uh, in as many fields and uh, as many languages I could find, just to get an idea sort of what did people use calculators for. So I was not so much into manuals, because the people like Katie Wasserman or um, Jake or Eric are doing, were doing this. So this was, this was different. And so I, I hit about, in 2011, I hit about um, saturation point where I didn't find any new books. I was systematically trolling the um, the online catalog of the Library of Congress, of British Library, of German libraries, of some other European libraries, and um, so I basically sort of uh, didn't find any new things. And so then I decided, well, let's go for papers, reports from other publications, non-book publications, and then sort of. Um, there was a big jump in the, um, the, in the inventory of the bibliography, and that's basically still going on. And the occasional I do a progress report, I published something in data files some years back, and a couple of years back I reported the HTC. And for about a year, this bibliography is now sort of hosted on Eric's uh, hpcalc.org uh, site. So I every half a year or so, sort of, I send Eric a new file and he hosts it so that you have access to 500 pages plus PDF file searchable that you can use this. The original file database is sort of, since I started on Excel, it's still residing in Excel and I have no real plan to, to, um, to alter that. So here's a graph where you can see how over the years the bibliography Grew. I remember sort of I, the first go. I had about two hundred twenty books in the, in the launch of the Linz Airport in Austria. So that was the biggest jump ever. And then sort of you can see up to two thousand eleven. So I just sort of scraped thousand entries. Then I decided to go for papers. And ever since you had some more or less linear growth. So every year I had a few, a few, a few documents um, which I become aware of. And most recently, so I regularly see what Slide Rule publishes there on the on the HP forum, and I he, he he comes up with some interesting stuff. So some of that I know, some of it I don't. So I just add it to the bibliography, or I find some new uh, link or new database of the U.S. government which sort of hosts reports and that sort of is responsible for the growth. Um, it's 5,169 entries. Um, the, the concept, I, I collect everything into the bibliography which sort of has brought it to a calculator, calculator application, which goes to 
early desktop computers. I'm not particularly interested in PCs or everything sort of on that kind. Um, so precursors to calculators are, are fine, and graphic, non-graphic, whatever falls under the general concept of calculator is put in the um, in the bibliography. Currently, I was that there are documents in 16 languages, of which I understand two, and there's uh, this is a serious limitation because there must be much more stuff out there especially Spanish, because the, the many calculators, especially 48 and later machines, were popular in, in South America. And there are tons of publications there which I'm probably not aware of, or well, obviously not aware of, otherwise they would be in the, in the bibliography. So um, the current holding of the bibliography is sort of subject to the, my language bias, and uh, whoever has a hint of some interesting stuff, uh, I'm more than happy to include it. I have category, other than the uh, slide rule puts out the, the stuff that puts the, the HP forum, and I, I put it in sort of sorted by technical fields, which I'll give you a, a glimpse in a sec, uh, 57 technical fields, and they took this from the HP user library because at one point I had the idea so that, that we might add HP programs, application programs, to that, um, to the bibliography, so I wanted to establish some order, so that you, if you are interested in a specific field, you can you can find it. And so, in the bibliography you have on your stick is a breakdown of the um, of the subject. So, not surprising, almost sixteen percent is educational, fifteen percent model specific, and then you just wide range so from astronomy to uh, forestry, agriculture, whatnot, it's all in there, and it's sorted. Um, the entries represent about 320,000 pages. That's a rough estimate. If you want to print that out, in case you have nothing better to do, and you really want to do, do something harmful to the environment, you could do that. You would end up with something like 32 meters, that must be something like 100 feet uh, of print outputs uh, stacked. Um, so that's quite a bit of paper. Um, I, I have about, from the, whole, from the holdings, I have about 60% I have in paper or in electronic form. So in case somebody really wants to have one of those entries and can't find it on the internet, just shoot me a mail. Uh, I would send it electronically if, it's not, if, I don't, if I don't have to scan the book. But if, I, if it's freely available and some of the material is copyrighted, uh, but uh, we'll find ways to, in case you were interested. And the bibliography is device independent, and so it's HP, TI, Sharp, uh, whatever application I could find, uh, I'll put it in there. And actually, that's interesting for people to see what people have been using different machines for. That's part of the story. OK, so 2010, this is one of the findings. Uh, so the distribution, when documents were published hasn't changed very much. So this is uh, um, a plot where you can see the publications per year in 2000. This was the result in 2010. And if you go 11 years further, you basically end up with the same distribution. So it's unimodal. You have one peak around uh, 1980, 81, which sort of, should, sort of is intuitively feels correct because that was those were the days. And then sort of it, it fell off and ended, but didn't peter out completely. It ended in a pretty persistent fat tail. So uh, here it is. So, so the shape of the fat tail has changed a bit, but it's certainly a fat tail. And that's primarily due to hundreds of papers and articles describing how you can solve quadratic equations uh, in high school. So it's utterly fascinating, but it's it's in there. Uh, and application of graphic calculators and, and how to use them in school, how not to use them, or should use them. This is all basically responsible for the fat tail. The big peed is there's a lot of interesting stuff, how people tackle differential equations. Um, biology problems, math problems, physics problems, whatever problem, medical problems, 
That was in the 80s. That was moved later on to, to obviously, to, to, to PCs and other machines. Uh, but this is where a lot of interesting stuff comes from. Um, to put this in perspective, the bibliography in perspective, uh, these are some other documentation projects where Eric is just sort of set up this literature, hpcalc.org, which is amazing. Uh, he puts up new stuff almost every day, uh, mostly manuals, but also books. And he, he is in, in, in perfect scan, so make sure that you have a large hard disk to, to absorb all that. Uh, then, of course, Dave Hicks has is documenting what he did for the last many, many years, up to HP 48SX. Later stuff, um, it's not immediately documented there. Jake has been expounding his uh, um, DVDs. Well, now it's, I think it's a stick. Um, it's mostly PPC and EduCalc, so he's all, he scanned all the EduCalc catalogs, and he has much, much more material there on this, so it's a real treasure trove. And Warren Fowler is one good example where somebody just um, made an extensive database on, on 41. Modules, books, everything in there, so it's, it, 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 it's really a lot. It's interesting actually to compare the 41 material from the museum, from Warren Fowler, and what Eric now has uh, on his database, so you have different versions of uh, solution manual, or the, these um, library solution and the packs, so you can have revision A, B, C. If you just combine all this material, you get a, a pretty interesting overview of how things changed over time. So, and my bibliography just sort of is not really overlapping with those projects because those guys were, are doing a fantastic job already. And this is complementing this by co gathering together um, books and and papers and applications. What, what did people do with calculators in general? And here's an example. So since I'm into astronomy, I just overheard the last sentence of Richard, hi Richard, uh, that you look through uh, the, the great telescope there in, in California. Uh, go to, in that, great experience. If you want to recreate a good experience with astronomy on a calculator, this is the book to start. On Jean Mus, it's a Belgian guy, and he published way back in the 70s books on algorithm on calculators. They were reviewed in PPC, and I got to know them through PPC, went to the local library in Hanover, got a copy of them that, that was a well-thumbed copy, and that evolved through different versions, and this is the second edition of Mathematical Algorithms in 1998, and it's still, it's cited a lot uh, by amateurs, by, by everybody who wants to compute something. Uh, you find everything here, yeah, they're short of detailed eclipse calculations. So, for details, sort of when you want the path, the ground path of the solar eclipse, you have to go elsewhere. But you can find methods here if you want to predict if an eclipse is likely or not that you can do with this book. There's a new version, French version, 2014, slightly abbreviated, but still sort of, sort of adapted for more modern use. And it gives all the algorithms, very little derivation, it's not a textbook, it's a great cookbook, and it's very complete, and you, you can find sort of planetary calculations there, sort of lunar phases, uh, orbit determinations, or everything you might be interested in computational-wise, that's a great book. And interestingly, John Hughes used an 84, HP 84 to, 80, sorry, 85, 85, to do his early calculations. And the book is device independent, but uh, you can, when you read it, you see that he used HP for quite a bit. Uh, fun fact, uh, sort of, there's the asteroid Maus, two, two, uh, 2213, is named after him, and uh, so 
in case that asteroid hits Earth, it's going to hit us badly because it's 4.5 kilometers wide, so you will notice that. So that, but that's a great book. Uh, in a similar vein, similar history, there is a book, Practical Astronomy with Your Calculator or Spreadsheet, by Buford Smith and Swart. Again, Buford Smith started in the 70s, late, late 70s, published for calculators, they have different evolutions, great cookbook, no textbook. It's not as deep and comprehensive as Meus, but it's probably easier to use, and he introduces downloadable spreadsheets. You can do the whole thing with spreadsheets if you like. I think spreadsheets are not ideally suited for this kind of information, but it's easy to do. And again, a great book. And this is something over the years I had different versions of those books, collected them, put them in your blog, so somebody has interest in astronomy, you will find hints where you can start. And then you can take other subjects which are in the bibliography and so you find them sorted. And this is a weird book. Uh, actually, has not good graphics apart from the cover here. So with this terrible calculator here, and uh, it's a very odd book. You can use a calculator to design sundials and astrolabs and, and really interesting sort of devices which you can use for astronomical observations. And again, it's device independent. You can use it with any calculator. And you can learn a lot about positional astronomy and spherical astronomy. So it's a little more limited than used and uh, David Smith, but it's going different direction. That let's build a device. That's a good start for you for using it. It has a nice seventy feel to uh, when you use. It. And when you troll the the the, the internet and. Uh, you'll find something like this, like paper from 72 by Bernard Oliver, who was the head of R&D by HP, and he published something in Sky and, Television, te uh, Sky and Telescope about uh, the shape of the analemma, this path the sun takes when you make an observation of the sun, how over the year you have a very particular uh, shape which uh, uh, is drawn in the sky. And he has calculated this, and you can see here this enlarged thing that an HP 9100A was used for that. So in 72, uh, the head of R&D of HP had thought it was a good idea to publish something in Sky and Telescope on astronomy calculators. And this is kind of gives you an idea of the breadth of material you can find when you dig in the literature. And this is about this is astronomy. He is see happens to be my field of interest. Uh, if you were interested in anything else, in any other field, you will probably find stuff which you can use to start digging in. And I would love to hear when you when you find something else. So that concludes uh, this brief overview. Um, I have some several hundreds of teaching references which I I mentioned are not overly exciting. Um, I will add them over the over time and to, when I when I have time and, and, and the nerve to, to do it. There's a database called Eric, all capitals, which is uh, a repository for educational publications in the U.S. You could so if somebody in the occasional field publish something, it's it ends up this this huge database. Uh, and if you type in calculator and your graphic calculator, you can find tons of stuff. Um, I would like to have more references from electrical engineers, civil engineering, and finance. And by training, I'm, I'm a mechanical and chemical engineer, so I have probably a bit more access to that literature. But uh, if people with other backgrounds have have something which they which is not on the bibliography, just shoot me an email, uh, I, I will edit. Especially in sort of other languages than English and German, two languages I happen to know, so French, Spanish, Russian, Malay, I have a few Malay references, because people use the calculus they are well, well. So whatever you find, it might, it gives an idea sort of how calculus were used over the years. And of course, uh, many thanks are to you in alphabetical order, built by Clara Warren, Prolo, Martin Heffler, 
uh, David Higgs, Jim Johnson, Thomas Klein, Peter Marshall, uh, Richard, Bob Hatton, Eric Brecklin, Slide Rule, and Jeremy all helped over the last 10 plus years to with references or advice. So thanks to all of those guys. And that basically con that concludes this brief overview of the current bibliography. Can you hear me now, Felix? Stop sharing the screen and bring your video back, Felix. Okay. Yep. Do I'll do. Have to get a hold of my cursor here. Yep. Yeah. So Richard asked if you could hear him. Can you hear me now? I can, I can hear you. Uh, there's a book on the prize table, just as a check. Uh, you probably have it. Uh, the title is Handheld Calculator Programs for Engineering Design by Melvin Markner. He's got a book for you to check at some point uh, whether you have okay. it. Okay. Oh, the, this is the, the, the proof of the pudding. I love that. <laughs> it's real time. Open up to the camera. It's for TI. Show him the show him the show him the hold it up to the hold it up to the camera. Hold hold camera the camera up so I can see it. Where's the camera, camera above the screen there? There you go. Yeah, got that. It's up. Uh, uh, actually, I have that in paper. Just check if it's here. Yeah, he's yeah. going to show you it's his copy. <laughs> Uh, and the astronomy stuff is here, so it, it just sort of nice bookshelves. <laughs> this is a part of the outlook of Mr. Amius. Wow! And so he, these are the different language versions, but but he wrote five books of this. Astronomical, this is all marriage, but astronomical morsels, and he he is this is most interesting because most of this work was done with the HP uh, eighty five, but it's all very accessible by uh, to uh, to calculators, and he did. He he for example he had fun calculating how close will do some asteroids get over the next hundred years? So he ran all kind of orbits of asteroids, and they then sort of found out when do they get closest. And, and, and these kind of things, so this is when you have access to computers, you what you can do. So this should cover the worst lockdown ever, sort of, to get through that. I think you wrote a lot of things for Sky and Telescope magazine, too. Pardon? John Mayus, didn't he write a lot of things for Sky and Telescope? on astronomical calculations? Uh, it, John Mears did publish in Sky and Cal Telescope, yeah. and he, he, he published also a lot of in, in French and in, in, in Flemish. And uh, he, he, he's, he's a meteorologist by training. He was a meteorologist at the, or is a, well, yeah, was a meteorologist. He was born in 29, um, uh, at the Brussels airport. Crazy. By training, he's a mathematician. But he was always, but he is the authority on sort of positional and calculating uh, positional and calculating aspect of astronomy. He published also um, canons of solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. Oh yeah. So so he he did, and these are the uh, still the most cited ones when you have sort of won't have solar eclipses in the past for historical purposes, uh, then that's what he did. But he did use calculators for that. Didn't he uh, have some article, he or somebody else had an article about calculations of the Earth's orbital eccentricity over, over many millions of years or something? There's one, one interesting thing I did with the HP50 is so there's a Kepler's equation, which is a transcendental transcendental equation, so you have to solve it numerically. And this is solved for hundreds of years of different out there's even a book of which collects all methods how to solve Kepler's equation. And if you use the if you just use the solver within the HP fifty and throw it some really weird ellipses like cigar like ellipses uh, or other de degenerate cases, the solver is pretty robust. You when um, you can 
you could solve Kepler's equation all right with a very, very simple one-line program. Oh, wow. That was quite amusing. Uh, and by the way, they, most of these books were published by uh, Wilman Bell, a well-known publisher of astronomy books. That, a few months ago, went out of business. So, uh, some of the, 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 the stock and the publication rights were bought up by the American Association for Astronomy. So, some of the stuff will become available, but not probably everything. So, if you're interested in that and you have a Wilman Bell book somewhere in your shelf, uh, hold on to it because it might no longer. They, they will, there's a scarcity in these book in certain publications. So, so all these, these are all Wilman Bell books. Anya notes those. They're enrichment. Any other questions? Kim, do you, have, do you have an online source for Sky and Telescope? No. Um, there is one, th they, they published something like a DVD version of it. There was a six DVD version of Sky and Telescope, oh. and that was sort of page-wise. Um, that was then for some copyright reasons sort of taken off, it was, was on and off, it was not available, but I got hands on those DVDs, wrote a little program to sort of put them together in, in, in we have one month, or so you have monthly files at least. So I have, I have all Sky and Telescope up to the 80s, I think, on, on, on my drive. It's, it's, you can, I think you can still get them on, on, on Amazon, on, on a DVD. But I'm not aware. I'm not really. I'm not aware if they have it online archived. Because I've got tons of references, but you can't find Sky and Telescope anywhere. So I yeah, do anything with them. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I got. I've, I've trolled this quite a bit, but I'm not sure if I got everything in there, uh, because they 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 publish a lot of basic programs there in 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 the eighties with soon the sort of computer square. So Apple II or so came out. Uh, they do a lot of basic, but there's a lot of calculator stuff in there as well, of course. Thank you. But it's difficult to get by. You have to, you have to have, you have some access to the electronic material. Thank you very much, Felix. Thank you for your